capacity crowd, standing room only. Texas, Nebraska, it's always special, particularly with everything on the line, like tonight, a trip to the national semifinals. It's the Longhorns and the Cornhuskers, two of the most storied programs in the history of college volleyball. For the Longhorns, they almost didn't make it to their 26 regional final. They were trailing two sets to none to Washington and 15-10 before coming storming back to give themselves this opportunity to get back to the championship. For Nebraska, what a resume, 31 regional final appearances, and this is their 10th in a row. Nebraska leads the all-time series, as you can see, but most importantly in the NCAA tournament, Texas has a slight edge, and they do because they beat Nebraska last year, three sets to one. They look ready, Salima. <laughs> I think we are as well. Hi, everybody, Paul Sunderland with my partner. As always, three-time All-American Salima Rockwell. When this all started, long, long ago and far away, it was USC and UCLA, then in your generation, Penn State and the same Nebraska team. But is this now the best rivalry in all of college volleyball? I, I would say without a doubt. And it's not just the history they have playing in the same conference. It's really the magnitude of the matches and the importance of the big matches they played in, ruining one another's seasons back and forth over the years. So this has become the biggest rivalry in volleyball. They played for the championship in 1995. They did it again in 2015. They played in the semifinals in 2016. You get the idea, but they get there very differently. They do, and for Texas, it is their offense. They are loaded from every single position. It's rare that you find a team that has every single player hitting over 300, and their serving game has increased, and that's why they've become so dangerous. They always have done it at the net, but now they're getting it done from the service line. A very slow start for Logan Eggleston and the rest of the Longhorns, but look what they did offensively over the final four sets, and that was the first ever NCAA win for a Longhorn team after trailing two sets to one for Nebraska. Quite literally, the best backcourt defensive team in the country. Without question, they have at sometimes three Libros on the court because they are so good defensively, keeping everything off the floor. This is something that Texas has not seen, this level of floor defense over the course of the season. You see where they rank in those categories. Look what they do to opponent hitting percentage, digs per set, 17.2. The question for Nebraska is after they dig a ball, can they convert against this Texas block and defense as well? Best three out of five sets. One more ticket to be punched. Nebraska in their road red uniforms, and we're underway. And immediately one of those digs. And a block by Texas. There it is right there. That's the nature of the beast. Leslie Rodriguez, the defensive player of the year, wearing number eight in the black Libero jersey, only a freshman. Perfect dig, but Nebraska was unable to put a point on the board. That is going to be the question. Can they transition fast enough and beat the block of Texas? Here's Nalani Yosiva, CF 5'8", sophomore out of Torrance, California. The Libero for the Longhorns. Eggleston, first look into the cross court. Nice shot by number 22, Lindsey Krause, one of three outstanding freshmen in the starting lineup for the Cornhuskers, six foot four freshman out of Papillion, Nebraska. The Cornhuskers finished second in the Big Ten Conference, the nation's strongest at 15 and four. 24 and seven overall. Here's Kenzie Knuckles, formerly a Libero, now playing defensive specialist and back row attacker at times. Exactly. <laughs> Kubik looking to go over the top. Did she get a touch? No, missed that one. Over the top of the block and out of bounds. They're going to need, Nebraska's going to need their left sides to be big and have a good night this evening. Maddie Kubik can do it. She has been their rock throughout the season. They need to keep that ball in the court, give themselves a chance. Sydney Peterson wearing number eight in white, defensive specialist, 5'4", senior out of Dyke, Iowa, was spectacular throughout the course of the evening against Washington in that comeback win. Kubik going into the cross court and missed it just out of bounds. So a couple of hitting errors by the Cornhuskers and Texas goes out quickly. When you look at the block of Texas, you've got to work around it, got to find ways to find the floor. And that's what Matty Kubik is doing right now. Mentioned Peterson and her play against the Huskies, 14 digs on the night and really did a wonderful job in first ball contact. 
Kayla Cathy over the top of the block and down, wearing number three in red, six-foot senior. The transfer from Missouri out of Chicago, Illinois, hit 383 on the season. And a nice run by Nebraska, running that just in the gap over the top of O'Neill with no help from Gabriel. Here is Lexi Rodriguez, first team all Big Ten, and once again, defensive player of the year, tough serve down the line. Kubik going to get another look. Pretty good set in transition. Haynes is there on the pancake. Not a good free ball pass by Peterson. Maybe some early nerves. The poke again and too much traffic along the sideline. That ball was passed just a little bit off the net, and they weren't really able to run their offense like they wanted to. But, of course, Eggleston coming through, hitting that high, flat swing off the hands of the block. Logan Eggleston had 20 kills on 34 swings. The 6'2 senior out of Brentwood, Tennessee, back-to-back -back Big 12 Player of the Year. A little bit of a combination play, and it caught Peterson up high, unable to control. Moving Kubik around a little bit, just giving her some different looks, and that's where that change happened. She came in for that inside two and cut it back to the corner. Defensive specialist out of Hawaii, Kionale Akana, 5'9", sophomore. Part of that digging trio. You may get past the block, but it's hard to get the ball on the floor against these Huskers. And they are a tough serving team. She's one of the best. Give me five, sling her up well, right on cue. Hard, flat, with velocity, working on Eggleston. And when we spoke with Nebraska head coach John Cook earlier today, we asked him about serving targets. He said, look, we have a different one in every rotation. Yep. But isn't it Eggleston most of the time because she's so important to Texas? It is Eggleston a lot of the time, but it's, it really depends. And sometimes it's a hitting number off of a certain passer in a certain rotation as well. This is just putting some pressure on her. Skyler Fields rolling. That was a good shot by number five in white. She needs some help from her teammates. That's got to come up. A very smart shot. They need to just hustle, get after the ball. That's what we saw in that second half of the Washington match where they just upped their defense. That ball wouldn't have fallen in those last few sets. Skylar Fields got off to a very, very slow start against Washington. Four of 14 on 17 swings, but then completely turned it around. Out of the back row, nice high hard swing by 33 and White Eggleston. What a good read by Nebraska. Got both blockers in there. They were in place, but Eggleston sees that little bit of an open, opening off the right hand of Lauren Stiverns. When these two teams met last year in Omaha, three sets to one for Asia O'Neill. Logan Eggleston had 18 kills, as did Skylar Fields. Fields was spectacular. 18 of 27, one error. Well, she can just go off at times, go over top of the block. Tied at five. Perfect pass going away from the slide. Maddie Kubik, perfectly executed roll shot right into the campfire. Well, that's the thing. She didn't have to hit it as hard as she could. She wanted to take a little bit off of it and just groove it right down in front of the defense. Right now, Kubik has a matchup, at least in a couple of rotations, with Jenna Gabriel. Advantage, uh, Nebraska? Without question. If she can really work that down the line, doesn't have to be clean, but just work that half of the court. Fields again. That's pitch and catch to Rodriguez. <laughs> it is indeed. Perfect pass, perfect free ball pass. And thrown down, working on Akana by Breon Butler for number 10's first kill, returning All-American for Texas. Well, and that's what Texas has to be patient with their swings. First dog, ball perfectly dug out of the left back, come back again and find a different way to score. Breon Butler, 6'4", senior out of Kendleton, Texas. And that ball just out of bounds. One of only two seniors who are not going to use their extra COVID year. She'll be leaving the Texas program. Has already redshirted once, as will defensive specialist Sydney Peterson. Everybody else is coming back. That's a pretty uh, good core to come back. <laughs> Here is Lauren Stiverance. Speaking of All-American, six foot four senior, three-time All-American out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Good block. Kathy, along with Batenhorst, Allie Batenhorst, first time we call her number. Another one of these outstanding freshmen, six foot four out of Houston, Texas, wearing number 14 in red. Good help, but that was really Kathy yep. diving into that angle, seeing it, reading it well. You can see that's a great look right there, cutting off that angle. 
Stiver and served very well in their win over Illinois on Thursday night. Perfect pass. Almost one on none. Yeah. You want to talk matchup right now with Skylar Good Fields point. going Good over point. Nicklin Haynes. She can, if that ball is all the way at the antenna, she can rise above it and really crush that line. Well, and I'm looking at the rotations, and it appears to me, if I can count to six, that that, that matchup's going to be there a lot. <laughs> Here is Medellin Ipara, 5'11 sophomore out of Mexico, led all Big Ten, Big 12 servers in aces. Baton Horse going off speed. The ball's up by Gabriel. Oh, they called that down. The linesman, the linesman on the Texas side is hearing it from this standing room only crowd. <laughs> that that play is challengeable. It is challengeable. There's no real argument. So I think Gabriel knew that part of that ball hit the floor. Good call. Good call. We're using the quote unquote old challenge system. We'll get into that in a moment. That ball drifts just out of bounds. We've got a moment. During the course of the season in all the Power Five conferences, you had two challenges. And if you were proven correct, you basically had an infinite number. Right. Well, going back to quote unquote the old system, you get three to start the match. You get an additional if we play five sets. But once you use it, it's gone. It's gone. And, and it's a different strategy with both systems and how you, and how you use the challenges and when. Prowsey able to tap that ball down inside the block of O'Neill and Phillips. Speaking of challenges, how huge was a challenge for Texas oh in the Washington match? It was 1917, the ball just barely Crazy grazed the antenna. antenna. That was a big one. Nebraska leading 10 8 and now make it 10 9. Lindsey Krause, 8 of 14 against Illinois. Illinois playing shorthanded. Nebraska beating the Fighting Illini for the seventh straight time. Beat him 25-12, 25-21, 25-17. And it is Lindsey Krause's 19th birthday by the by. Good pass by Kubik. Nebraska's receiving serve very well right now. Pokey. Right back at you and kept alive. Good stab save, but Texas could not follow up on the play, and Nebraska continues to lead. What have you seen so far? It is going as you expected. Some things for people to look for on either side. It is. It, yeah, it's the tough serving. You're going to see a couple of misses from Nebraska, but they're both really good serving teams. So you're going to see that. I'm impressed with Nebraska's serve receive right now, really holding it down. And Texas is also able to get the ball going. But the defense, you've seen Nebraska dig. They haven't quite been able to transition through some of those plays. But Texas being patient when they do dig. So pretty consistent with what we thought would happen so far. That ball missed just out of bounds. Quick look at Jared Elliott. Two outstanding coaches. There is his counterpart, John Cook, in his 22nd year. Coach Elliott in his 21st. Good pass by Eggleston. That was an awkward looking play, but the ball is blocked on the outside by Krause. And now the biggest lead for the visiting Cornhuskers in this regional final. Back in beautiful Austin, Texas, cooled off a little bit. Where did where did the spring weather go? It was in the 50s today. That's what happens here in Texas. It's just so crazy in the winter. Seventh meeting in the NCAA tournament all time. And a lot of them very, very big matches. The fourth in a regional final. Nebraska pretty dialed in now blocking. They've already blocked three balls. Good set in transition. Krause into the cross court and Peterson could not control. When you talk about the blocking and, and the serve is always connected. What are we where are we going with the ball? And then where does the ball go off the net? And what does that mean? Where where are they going to set that right now? It just looks like Nebraska knows exactly where Texas is going to set the ball. Krause a perfect four for four to start this regional final. Obviously, her first is only a freshman. What a pressure cooker. She's had a really good freshman year. O'Neill on the slide. Good cover. Cover by Yosia. Kubik looking high hands. Really good first contact. Can Nebraska play some defense? Yeah, they do. They make you really work. Everybody. They get on the board. Everybody. I mean, Nicklin Haynes, a fantastic defender as well. That time she's on retreating, getting back to her defensive spot, and Eggleston recognizes that and just chops it over the block. 
Logan Eggleston now speaking of defense some block touches some stuff blocks and some digs Eggleston now three of 11. 14 10 is the advantage for Nebraska the number 10 overall seed Texas the number two seed. Combination play. Nice move. Stiverin's attracting a lot of attention and then Cubic going against the flow. Two of the very, very best for a long time between them. Six national, five national championships. Four for John Cook. Jared Elliott winning his in 2012. Hall of Famer in John Cook, the fifth winningest coach in the history of the sport. And this year, once again, for the eighth time, Jared Elliott, the Big 12 Coach of the Year. Consistency. They're always in the mix. Some serious numbers as winning percentages. That's trouble. Shank pass. Stiverns with a tap down. Nebraska serving again. This is a tough, tough serving team. I've watched them over the course of the season really get teams in trouble. Lauren Stiverns in the middle of your screen at the net. Returning All-American middle blocker had off-season back surgery back on May 11th did not play until the 13th match of the season another shank pass Texas needs to use their second timeout. Yeah, coach Elliott's gonna call their second 17 10 Nebraska Our hearts are with those affected by the devastating storms that swept through the United States last night to all who were impacted and to the communities who begin to recover the recovery process. You were in our thoughts and prayers. Travis Hudson, the outstanding head coach at Western Kentucky, had these thoughts on Twitter. And I was just looking at the bottom. Just watch how many beautiful, giving, selfless people step forward to put our community back together. And it's going to take a lot. The devastation. We were having our meeting. And it was mentioned that this tornado was on the ground for 277 miles. I've never heard of such a thing. It, it, there is no such a thing, and it's so terrible, but it's good to hear that the community is rallying around and, and trying to help. Coming out of the timeout, Akana back to serve. Peterson now in a two-person serve receive. Good use of the timeout, but now Texas is out of timeouts. Neither team has used a challenge as yet. Asia O'Neill back to the line. Seven of 15, no errors on Thursday night against Washington. O'Neill's going to come down the line here. Atacana. What a pass. That ball was deep in the seam. And missed out of bounds. Kenzie Knuckles missed that, number two in red. Coach Elliott gave us some really interesting numbers as far as serve, receive, and efficiency. When Lexi Rodriguez makes first contact, Nebraska sides out at a 400 efficiency. It's after crazy. that, the drop off, Akan is next, but it's after that, it's precipitous. It really is. And that, those are the numbers you get from Volumetrics, and you play off of those numbers. Second stuff block for Texas. Texas getting themselves in place. That falls off the net. Look at Butler. Man, drop that left hand. Boy, that's a mistake by Kubik. One of the best at her position. Going after Brian Butler at six foot four when you got five foot eight Jenna Gabriel down the line. You know, she was trying to go sharp into the cross court and it just didn't exist. Tyler Hildebrand, outstanding assistant coach, going over to Cubic and saying, you know, you, yeah. you might want to go over <laughs> and think about that one. Coverage of the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship continues with the national semifinals on Thursday at 7 Eastern time on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. And some congratulations to the Louisville Cardinal into the national semifinals for the first time. The number four seed, Wisconsin Badgers, in three sets over Minnesota. Wisconsin will be going to their third straight national semifinal. The Pitt Panthers, look at that, two ACC teams. And the Pitt Panthers will take on the winner of this match between number 10, Nebraska, and number two, Texas. But Pitt looked good in that match against Purdue, really just firing on all cylinders. A lot of live attackers on that team. Lecator member Monet <laughs> or member money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. She was money yeah, tonight. That's she for was sure. she was really, really good. That was a solid, solid performance.
You know who was really good today as well? Freshman setter Rachel Fairbanks for Pittsburgh. So good. Really good. Really, She's playing six rotations as a setter and attacking as well. She was really good. What a live arm. She hits a heavy, hard ball. 17-13. Nebraska led it at the first Texas timeout, 13-9. And then at the second, 17-10, a mini run for the Longhorns, forcing a timeout to be called by Nebraska. Saw Coach Elliott at the bottom of your screen, get, trying to get the crowd involved. He knows how important they are. They're here. <laughs> They're involved. Not a great set. That ball was outside the antenna. Pitch and catch. Lexi Rodriguez is phenomenal digging into the cross court. You just don't want to hit right at her. You just don't. Or at Knuckles. Or at Knuckles. <laughs> or at Akana. Smart shot. That's Nebraska at their best. Well, that's what they have to do. They've been smart with in a good position. You know they're going to dig the ball. We talked about this early on. Can they transition and score? Got to be smart off the edge of the block. And two of the hands off of Gabriel. Right now, Nebraska siding out at 77%. Texas at 56. Overpass. Batenhorst straight to the floor. Tons. Texas is out of timeouts. Yeah, tons of service pressure here. Going hard into that team between Eggleston and Peterson. Kubik looking over to the sideline. The coaches will give her the area or the player to be probed from the service line. Easy chance once again for Nebraska. Baton horse off speed, off the edge, and the Cornhuskers are rolling right now, leading 20 to 13. And not even flinging that ball to, to Stiverns right now. They know that Texas knows Stiverns could get the ball. They want to set her, so they're sitting outside over Gabriel and scoring down the line. Well, one of the things we found out about the All-American Stiverns wearing number 26 suffered a left ankle sprain less than a week ago. Yeah. So. Coach Cook said she's 100%, but <laughs> that's easy for him to say. Yeah, exactly. Batenhorst. Off the edge again. How key is it to the success for Nebraska to have production out of that left side hitting position? It's everything. You know you're going to get it from the middles. Maddie Kubik has been so good all year. That's the one piece that's been kind of missing. So that's going to be huge for them tonight. Look at these two freshman attackers, Batenhorst and Krause. Perfect eight for eight. And you wonder if Coach Elliott might make that switch with his other setter coming in to get some blocking size. Well, right now, off-speed shot, but Texas looks like they did in the opening set against Washington. Texas can't pass. Now they're on their heels right now and, and trying to find ways to get the ball on the floor, and that's, that's hard against a team like Nebraska. When we talked to Jenna Gabriel after that comeback win, on Thursday night, she said that it was the turnaround of the passers right. that really, really gave Texas an opportunity to come back in that match. Combination play, Cubic off the edge, Gabriel there comfortably. Good cover by Akana. Right side to Phillips, one-on-one, -on -one, out of bounds into the antenna. Set too wide. It may have been a little bit too wide, or she tried to just cut it off. But look at this coverage right here. Akana just laying out. Nebraska defense, we're going to say it all night. We'll take a good look at this swing by Phillips. It just grazed it. Just grazed it. Here is Stiverance, who had three aces on Thursday night against the Illini. Off speed, smart shot. Skyler Field, 6'2", junior out of Missouri City, Texas. First team all Big 12 once again. Sixth in the conference in attacking at 331. And the other Texas attackers, O'Neal, Butler, and, and Molly Phillips, were 1, 2, and 3 in the conference. Wow, well, and they, all of them, they can all do it. It's a big moment. Para, Para can get Texas back in this opening set, or at least give them some momentum. Absolutely can. Well handled by Akana. The quality of contact is pretty good. 
Kayla Caffey able to throw that ball down through the Texas block. And let's talk about some of those block touches as well. Haynes is up there. She's not getting used. She's not getting hit over right now. Slowing the ball down and giving her, her defense a chance to get underneath it. So Nebraska is able to get by the par, a service rotation, if you will. Nebraska two points away from taking the opening set. That's trouble. Working on Phillips. Nice save by Gabriel. Wonderful dig. Can Eggleston convert? She does. Off of Krause. Fantastic dig down the line by Gabriel. Keeping that alive. Wants to keep this team in it. She's going to be grinding and going after. That is a competitor right there on the court. It's a huge ask for Texas to come back in this opening set. But what they have is time to get some comfort and get some momentum going into the second. Working on Cubic. Krause. Eggleston's out of the play. Eggleston's back in the play. <laughs> And you score in transition. Down the line by Logan Eggleston. Eggleston's done that twice now. She got Krause on the last one. Here's that transition play. And watch her just go after the right hand of Batenhorst. Just turns it right down the line. Off the hands and still inbounds. Yosia now at the service line. The libero for Texas has been exceptional as she was on Thursday night. Been solid all year long and getting better by the week. Combination play again, ripped but out of bounds. Looking for a touch. Better look by Texas, at least getting two blockers in front of her, reading that play. Might get a challenge here. Nebraska has a timeout left. If it was the old system and you yeah. were really sure you might use it, but it, with the 23-18 lead, yeah. I, I think you got to just say, wait a minute, we will Agreed. live to fight another, or we will live to disagree <laughs> another day. <laughs> That ball served out of bounds, and now Nebraska will have their first set point opportunity. Once again, the seventh meeting all time in the NCAA tournament. They played for the championship twice. They played in the semifinals in 2016. And Kenzie Knuckles, set point number one. Service error for Knuckles. Nebraska's been much better in serve and receive so far in this opening set, irrespective of that most recent miss. Here's Peterson, set point number two. Kubik on the left, Caffey in the middle, Krause on the right. Hard off the block by one of the best in the business. Matty Kubik, 6'3", junior out of West Des Moines, Iowa, returning All-American. Nebraska takes the opening set. NCAA Volleyball Championship coming your way from Austin, Texas. And right now, the Nebraska Cornhuskers asserting their defensive will on Texas. And as advertised, Nebraska 141 opponent hitting percentage, best in the Big Ten, seventh nationally. Well, it's everything they do, not just their floor defense, very good at blocking. We watch them in practice really training against the setter tendencies, and that's what I'm seeing right now develop. Where does the ball go based on where Jenna Gabriel is on the court, and they're really in a good position at the net. You wonder how the freshman Baton, Horst, and Krause would react to this sort of setting beautifully. Four of six for Baton, Horst, four of seven for Krause, just one error between the two, and you can see the numbers. Texas held to 125. But again, all about serve and reception right now. Baton, Horst, and the Cornhuskers are winning from the service line, but Texas was able to find their way into that contest against Washington, <laughs> although it took a while. They did. 2019, 25 19, 25 20, and down 15 10 before somehow Skyler Fields and the rest of the Longhorns were able to turn that around. Well, they're going to have to get something going here, turn things around in this set. Gabriel will start things off for Texas, 27 and 1 on the year. 15 and 1 in the Big 12. Good serve. Working on Cubic when they can. 
And Krause again, what a freshman. Lindsey Krause, Big Ten all-freshman team, and depending on the service, the number one or over, number one or two overall national recruit last year. And the birthday girl getting it done, and very good from the left side. I'd like to see her numbers hitting in that rotation on the left. There is Knuckles. Very easy serve. Fields. A strike. No pitch and catch. <laughs> well, she moved in, crashed into that middle of the court, left the sideline open, but it was a good pass. And Skyler Fields going just a little bit sharper into the court. Well handled by Rodriguez. That was a very good serve. That's up. Up by Gabriel. Right to the net. Kayla Caffey, the transfer out of Missouri. Really good delivery on a tight pass. Very good. Haynes is really good at working her way around the net, saving balls from going over. But Caffey's scary. She's a dangerous attacker. She can get up quick and fast and beat the block. Nicklin Hames, 5'10", senior out of Maryville, Tennessee, second team All-American last year. Twice she's made the All-Big Ten team, but did not make it this year. Good block touch out of the middle by Stiverance. What a cover by Rodriguez. You'll see it. Ball set a little bit too tight. Block touch there. Coming to Krause. No to Cubic on the outside. Eggleston away from Nicklin Hayes. Krause got bunched in there, but man, let's talk about that dig. That cover by Rodriguez, just staying underneath it. That's what Nebraska does so well. But here's Krause getting caught in the middle of the court, has to reach out, tries to slow it down, and Eggleston hitting off the hands. Oh, just served out of bounds. Lexi Rodriguez again out of Sterling, Illinois. It's about a two hour drive from Sterling, Illinois to Chicago to her club team. She would always get there early in thousands and thousands of reps and serve reception. But I talked to Tyler Hildebrandt about what has made Rodriguez so special. He said she just reads the game beautifully. She's in spots that nobody else even sees as evidenced by that cover. And it's just the perfect combination of a, someone coming out of that club. Shank pass. <laughs> And back to that point, coming out of that sports performance club, you're going to get trained. You're going to be trained really well. And he said it's the balance between reading well and being trained really well. Service winner by Akana had 13 digs and three aces on Thursday night. And missed that one just out of bounds. Just underway here in the second. Nebraska, the number 10 overall seed, 24 and 7. One of eight Big Ten teams to advance into the field this year. Won the opening set 25 19. They were in control the whole way. And now Texas returning a favor from the service line. They can do this, driving this ball straight down the line. They went after Akana here in the same rotation earlier, just really trying to work her sideline, keep that ball off the net and going high and outside. It's tough because Rodriguez stands right in the middle of the court and takes up a lot of space. Again, when Nebraska is able to have her make first contact, they side out at 40. Oh, look at that. Great serve by Peterson down the line, doing everything they can to keep it off of Rodriguez. Well, this is big. This is really big for Texas. They have to do this in this rotation. Get some serves on them. A couple of aces here. And they're going to move things around and now stack their passers and pull Akana out. Kubik is available in the five to five. They go after her. They get it on Knuckles. Oh, it's just out of bounds. Just being the operative word about eight feet. <laughs> well, they're going to have to. They're just going to keep moving the ball around. Avoid Rodriguez.
Stiverens rejected momentarily. Joust coming. Oh, Gabriel there along with Breon Butler uh, saving block that time. I think Cubic got it, number 10 in red. But how many balls have fallen that you think are just going to dribble down the net that are blocked and still covered by Nebraska, keeping the ball alive? What a play by Cubic at the net. That was really an interesting adjustment made by Nebraska when Akana got in some trouble pulling her out of the receive. Very quick set to Eggleston. That ball is up. Oh, look at that set. Haynes is doing a good job blocking her position. Very nice job. That ball thrown down by Logan Eggleston. That one was way inside the court. Eggleston threw that one back to the right side of the court. They're not happy about it. Yeah, they thought that that ball was illegally thrown, not tipped to the floor by Logan Eggleston, so there's going to be a talk about this one. Looks like we might even have a challenge. You can't challenge this. This no, is a judgment they're, call. They're challenging something else. Right. There's, yeah. So here's that throw back to the sideline, and it's how long is it in your hand? Does it change direction as well? We'll see what they're challenging here in a second. Well, you saw the Nebraska coaching staff, Tyler Hildebrand, again, who'd been in Nebraska a couple of years ago, was part of that championship in 2017. And again, you can challenge the entire rally. At the Olympic Games in the challenge system, right. you can only challenge the final action, or you have to press a buzzer to stop right. play. But in college, right. you can, if that rally that lasted about four and a half minutes, <laughs> you, could, you could go back and look could, at everything. You could dial it all the way back. They're looking, I believe, for a net violation on Eggleston. Yeah, they got a net violation. That is really good work and disciplined by the Nebraska coaching staff. Well, I'm just looking at it. You know, everyone's in charge of something, and they're taking it on. They're looking at everything on the court because those little plays, those are big. Yeah, the officials really didn't want to call that centerline violation mm -hmm. unless somebody was in danger or it interfered. Right. They wanted play to continue. But you have a, an assistant <laughs> coach staring at right. the center line, which is not part of the challenge in college volleyball, right. by the way. Over the top. Wow, good shot selection by Eggleston that time down in front of number six in red, Akana. Very smart. We'll take a look at this again. There it is. Yep. Wow. Yep, on the throwdown. It's a great call. Eggleston, very, very consistent. 44 aces, 45 errors. That's really a good number. And she serves tough in between. Well handled by Cubic. Stiverance. Stiverens has not been the focus of the offense no. so far, even on good reception, but she's got to give them a lot. Well, they have stressed the right side block of Texas, especially when Gabriel's been up there. And now since they've done that, that's going to open up some things for Stiverens, and that's that could be a little bit of trouble. The third attempt for Stiverens, her first kill. Both teams serving really tough. That's way easy. Chance here in transition. That ball should not go down. Kayla Caffey just kept that ball in play and somehow got to the floor on the side of Texas. Yeah, that ball was set a little bit too slow, but she hung in the air and, and made something of it. But you, that ball can't go down. No, it was too high, too slow. Stiverns again. Caffey, Batenhorst out on the left. It'll be to Batenhorst who tucks it down inside. What a match Batenhorst is having. It's been big, big for, for Nebraska right now. Going after again, down the line, trying to find some room in the block when Gabriel's up there. Batenhorst was 6 of 21 against Illinois so far. Early in the second set, she's 5, excuse me, make it 5, yeah, 5 of 8. Passing woes continue for Texas. Good block by Fields. Kathy Troy to go off speed and had the ball blocked right back on her. That by, ball died a little bit on Kathy. Yeah. She really couldn't get a good swing on it. Look at that hustle by Akana going after it. You make a, mis a setting mistake on the slide or too close to the net against either of these teams, particularly, particularly against Texas. Yeah, forget it. Asia O'Neill. 
Hot hand. Batenhorst feeling it. Goes off speed. Eggleston ripping out of the back row. Beautiful transition play. Again, two blockers in front of her, the middle and the left side block, and that's what Eggleston sees. So she goes to the right side of the court around Caffey. Eggleston getting a lot of action so far. No surprise there. She gets over 30% of all the sets. 9 of 23. Wonderful swing by number 14, Batenhorst. You've seen her play any number of matches this year when you covered the Big Ten. Is this the best start you've seen for her? Absolutely. I mean, she is feeling it right now. Smart with how she's swinging off the edges and then mixing it up, but getting on it pretty darn fast. I mean, that's the difference right now. Did not show that much heat on Thursday night. She has shown <laughs> much more tonight. Back row again. That ball's not down yet. Now it's called down. And once again, there's Tyler Hildebrand, the assistant coach. There's that. What they're arguing again. Yeah, Taking to, that ball. To me, that's a violation. That's not a tip. It, this is a rebound sport. Right. That is in her hand. That is, an, that is, in my opinion. But if the official's not going to call it, do it every time. Right. Just out of bounds. Wow, that was really close. Yeah, I believe that was just out. Everyone's booing. It was very, very close, but I saw it all out on the on the serve. Magnificent. We're going to have a challenge. Coach Elliott is going to challenge in or out on the serve. Magnificent crowd once again. Capacity about 4,500. There's about 5,000 in here. Yeah, that ball's out. Yeah, that ball is just over the end line. So Nebraska has used a challenge successfully, but they only have two left. Right. <laughs> Texas has used a challenge and is using it now unsuccessfully. They have two challenges remaining. If we play five, which is a very good likelihood, then each will get an additional challenge in the 15-point tiebreaker. Tie Back with three-time All-American Salima Rockwell. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations to Louisville, Wisconsin, and Pittsburgh. Who will it be? That ball's clearly out of bounds. Yeah, that's out of bounds. Yeah. Will it be Nebraska, who won the opening set 25 to 19? They did it at the defensive end, holding Texas to only 125 efficiency and siding out at just over 50 percent. I just thought that was a well-scouted set. They really executed the game plan exactly how they wanted to in set number one. So Louisville will take on Wisconsin in the first semifinal next Thursday and then followed by the Pitt Panthers who finished third in the ACC. Miami had a wonderful year but could not advance past Florida. And John Cook is still talking to the official about that throwdown. Just planting the seed, but now they, the, the first referee, who is Paula Martin, has established that she's going to let it go. Call it, yeah, and you have to be consistent throughout. One hundred percent. Here is Knuckles. Brian Butler. A little bit of a slip, a slow, yeah. developing quick set out of the middle. Well, when the ball's passed off the net, it, to be able to still get her involved, you have to run something like that. You can't fire it in there super quick. And she can go get it. She has the ability to score, even if it's off the net. Tied at 11. One last thought on the throwdown. I just don't want to see one called later after right. you've let five or six right. go. And let's not forget, Logan Eggleston did not invent that. That has oh, no. been in oh, the no. game, right? Nice pass, Krause. Slicing off the angle. Boy, the two freshmen, number 22, Lindsey Krause, along with Allie Batenhorst, number 14 in red, are superb so far. Excellent vision. Sees that block in front of the ball. Hits the right side of the ball just to chop it inside the block. That set was not perfect. It no. might have been outside the antenna. That was a really good play by Krause. Eggleston getting a lot of action. On top of the net, Cubic will take care of that. Started with the fir first block, keeping keeping that ball on the Texas side and then cleaning it up after the coverage. 23 digs now for Nebraska. The best in the country at the defensive end. Lexi Rodriguez back to serve. One more ticket to be punched to go to Columbus. Semifinals on Thursday.
Rodriguez, perfect set in transition off the edge of the block. Krause's going to get a touch. Beautiful play, a nice pick up by Haynes, but that ball by Rodriguez, she's so good at setting that second ball perfectly to her pins. Nebraska is better at the big things, serving and passing, and also better at all the little things right now, like that perfect bump set. Engelston is blocked. Krause again with some help from Stiverens. Krause taking care of that line. Really strong right hand. After a slow start, Texas put up their usual spectacular offensive numbers, but so far tonight, hitting 180 to Nebraska's 315. Nebraska only hits 220 on the year. Tough serve. And down. Nebraska rolling right now, extending their lead. 16-11. That area of the court has been trouble for Texas at some times between Par, Par and Yosian taking advantage of that right now. Timeout called by Texas. Used both of their timeouts relatively early in that opening set. Once again taken by Nebraska 25-19. The 20th annual Jimmy V Classic is Sunday afternoon on ESPN. 1 p.m. Eastern time. Number 14, Kentucky versus number 7, Louisville. 3 p.m. Eastern time. Number 8, Maryland versus number 1, South Carolina. To donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, go to V.org. Lindsay Krause, we talked about it's her birthday and she's playing like it, that's for sure. So good from every single area of the court. John Cook said he'd love to have her even play on the left and maybe we'll see that in future years, but has been good from the left and the right and a key player for this team. She's one of the freshmen that's been consistently on the court for Nebraska throughout the course of the season. Nebraska wants balance and they're getting it. Maddie Kubik has seven kills, but it's taken her quote unquote 23 shot attempts to get there. Look at Krause, seven of 11 hitting almost 550 and even better than that. Allie Batenhorst hitting six of 10. Well, and Krause three, I believe three of those were on the left in rotation one. Yep. So she's scoring over there, but getting it down on the right as well. Those two freshmen stepping up in a major way. Well, when we were walking over together to come to this match, we were talking about how it might play out. Right. And it was a lot of the conversation was about how could Nebraska score off the left. Yep. They're doing it first ball side out with Krause in rotation one, and they're also doing it in transition. Well, and Paul, that's such a good point because everything else they're doing, we know they can do. They play defense, right? They block well, but that's the difference right now. As far as hitting percentage, the 221 number is really low for a team in national championship contention. There is Rodriguez. Jenna Gabriel has had her track shoes on so far on the night. Kubik through Breon Butler and down. What can Texas do to slow down this onslaught? They have to pass the ball a little bit better, but when the ball comes back, they can't get tooled like that. Be patient, low and over. But, but really, sometimes you can't help it right now. The lefts are going off. The wheels are turning on the sideline of Texas. See, that pass is better. That set is low, though. Man, I don't like that set by Gabriel trying to go quick to Eggleston. And we're going to have a setter change. Sage Khan Ina Torres, the transfer from Utah, is coming on. See if she can change some things up here and just get the offense flowing a little bit differently and, and a little bit of a break as well for Texas. Scott Elliott will have some conversation with Jenna Gabriel. Overpass, wow. Nebraska did not play that well at all. Can Texas take advantage? Tied again. Play continued. There was some contact in the middle. <laughs> Wow, that is a yeah. really late call. It was late. Wow. Explain what happened there. Well, it was very late. That ball was passed. You'll see uh, Nicklin Haynes' is back row. The ball was coming over the net, and there was contact there. Did the ball cross the plane of the net? That's the question. And our referee believes that it did not and it's now given the ball to Nebraska. The ruling is that that ball was entirely on Nebraska's side Correct. and Breon Butler interfered with a setting attempt. That's a tough one, I'm not, that was close. 19-11, you can change setters, but you better change 
passing percentages as well. Absolutely. That one put down by Eggleston. Let's take a look at that last close play between Nicklin Hames and Breon Butler. Was the ball? Oh, yep. the ball still was on completely on Nebraska's side. That's a great call. I yep. thought it was going over the net, but that is a good that is the right call. Yep, absolutely. Good call. Right back at you. One slam dink deserves another. <laughs> Nebraska sideline not complaining about that one. No, not at all. Well. Stiffer's going up high, seeing the block well, and just flinging that thing down. Again, we're not calling her name a lot. They haven't needed to, and that's been their bread and butter, butter the middles, really. And right now, it's been all the lefts, and occasionally some middle. Still trying to recapture the strength that took her to first team All-American last year after back surgery. That ball is down, but just to finish the thought on Lauren Stiverns, a 6'4 senior out of Scottsdale. She's been a three-time All-American, but she had back surgery May 11th and had to have that later than she wanted because of the COVID restrictions. It was considered to be um, a, 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 a non-essential non -essential surgery. And she didn't start jumping again until early September and missed the first 12 matches of the year. And that's difficult, just jumping right in. Stiverns. Oh, rejected. And a little stare down from Eggleston. Oh, that is a monster block right there. Watch this perfectly timed. Stiverns just wanted to go hard down the line, and Eggleston got her. Going to be a net violation against Cubic. That ball set a little bit tight. Timeout, Nebraska. Logan Eggleston. Twice the Big 12 Player of the Year. It's well over 300. Being slowed somewhat right now by Nebraska's defense. Slowed down a little bit. When it matters, when it counts, that's when Logan Eggleston can step up. And that's what she's doing right now, trying to lead her team here and get some momentum going like they did against Washington. Left side, look at that. 42 swings because Texas can't pass. They can't pass, and, and right now, I mean, that's that's the difference. The middle and the right are not getting the ball like they normally do or would like to. And, and very, very predictable when you pass the ball so poorly that Texas has since the start of this match. Everybody knows it's going left side, so you look at the middles, Kayla Caffey along with Stiverns with some help from Krause, Bate, Norris. And as we talked about, Nicklin Hames is doing a good job blocking her position because she's not blocking a lot of sets that are in system. Absolutely, she can slow it down. She's a big, she's not a tiny setter. So this isn't someone that's really, really small. If the ball is off the net, she can get her hands in front of it and slow it down. Played a lot of volleyball for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the first ever freshman in program history to start. Coming out of the timeout, here's Peterson, 20 to 15. Peterson has been good from the service line. She's worked the ball straight down the line at Akana Pryor. We'll see if they pull Akana out, not even mess with it, and force her to go into the left side of the court towards Cubic and Knuckles, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. Right now, Nebraska siding out at 68%, Texas at 51. The last two sets on Thursday, Texas sided out at 90%. Service air, good use of the timeout. Nicklin Haynes points over, goes, nice job, coach. Right. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you need, just slow it, slow it down a little bit and make the service think. Nebraska won the opening set 25-19. They got out to a 17-10 lead and never looked back. Well, this is why all these sets are going to the left side. That ball is down. Wow, that's a roll shot. Looked pretty predictable, but Nebraska couldn't come up with it with Akana. Especially, it looked like the ball was at such an angle that she wasn't going to be able to even hit this ball down the line. So I'm surprised that Akana was so deep still down the line. They are the best in the country defensively, but they're not perfect. No, Nobody they're is. Not. <laughs> Guess we're expecting everything to be up. Here is Eggleston. 
Bad pass. Point for Texas. Texas is out of timeouts. Nebraska has one remaining. 6-2 run for the Longhorns. Remember that incredible run they went on in the third set on Thursday night? I do indeed. 10-4. to four. That run saved their tournament championship hopes. On the overpass, field skying and throwing that down. Well, and Texas can do it from the service line. They have the servers to go on these runs. And now Nebraska passing with two, getting everybody out of the way. Have Kubik down the line in area one, and they go after her. Good pass, really good pass. And Stiverin's able to tap into the middle of the campfire. Kubik stepping up big time on that pass, going right at her. Eggleston with such a tough serve, and that was right in between the passers. Nice job taking that seam. What a clutch pass when Nebraska had to have it create the opportunity for Stiverin's, who's really good at the line so far this weekend. Block touch deflected by Caffey. Nice play that time by Sage Kaina Torres. That's why she's in. She can score. She can make some things happen at the net. And we'll see if she can block some balls here as well. Kubik again. The pass is good enough. Baton horse block deflection. Perfect first contact by O'Neal. Asia O'Neal with a contact. Remember the dig the I, other night? I, I do. At 1917, right after that challenge, it was the same thing. Came in big time. I mean, she can play defense. We need to stop saying for a middle blocker. She can just flat out play defense. <laughs> Those are the little things that make a difference. 22-20. Out of the back row, O'Neal again, perfect dig. Papa Germain loved that one. He played some defense at his time, too. Sure did. But a smart shot, too. Vision at the net by Fields. Asia O'Neal, quality contact, and then a magnificent saving dig. Look at this. 10-3 run. Very, wow. very eerily similar eerily to Thursday similar. night. If you weren't with us on Thursday, Washington, the number 15 seed Huskies, and we said forget that number 15 number. Right. That is such a good team. They won the opening set 25-19. They won the second 25-20. Up in the third, 12-7, and then 15-10 until Texas came storming back. And then Texas absolutely dominated the fourth and the fifth. And it, it's almost exactly how it happened. The energy, the digs, the defensive effort, the change in just demeanor right now. And is this enough right now in this set to keep it going? The crowd sure thinks. It is. A little bit of history. Both of these programs, as we showed you right before first serve, have made a lot of history in the NCAA championships. This is the 41st edition. But that was the first time in Texas volleyball history in the tournament they came back from two sets down. All right, set it for us here, Salima. 22-21, O'Neal serving. They've taken a Kana out. Yep. And where do you go, assuming a workable pass for Nicklin Haynes? I think you want to go out to Batenhorst again. She's been good. If she can hit it off the hands and out of bounds, that's going to score. Easy serve. Not a perfect pass. Recycling out of the back row. Cubic having to tip. Nice play by Rodriguez. Another free ball. Yeah, 
How jacked is Skyler Fields right now? Turning it around again. It was Fields turned it around in the Washington match as well. Oh, by the way, killed by Texas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that happened. Tied at 22. And missed out of bounds. That was a really good run for O'Neill, both at the service line and defensively, and in first contact. It's a great run. And they can side it out here, all the momentum, and see if Nebraska can keep it together. The freshmen, can they stay calm and poised here in this set? Baton Horse and Krause up front, bookending on Kayla Caffey. On the slide, O'Neill, good block, touch by Baton Horse. Big one. Right back at you by Texas Fields. Feeling it, throwing it off the block and out of bounds. Very smart play. Couple of excellent touches on the outside by Sage Kahein, Tain, I know, Torres, excuse me. On the outside, slowing the ball down there. That shot is not working right now with her at the net. Torres, six-foot blocker, as opposed to 5'8", Gabriel. 23 all. And out of bounds, back-to-back -back service errors. Taking some pressure off of Nebraska. Kenzie Knuckles will come in to serve. Let's look at Knuckles' numbers. 32 aces, 28 errors, good ratio. And a good defensive lineup, as it is in all six rotations for Nebraska. Set point number one. Overpass. Texas, Texas was starting to find a rhythm and receive, but when it came down to it, a missed pass. Caffey goes downtown, and Nebraska leads two sets to none. Gregory Jim Austin, Texas, Nebraska, taking on the Longhorns once again, the number 10 seed Cornhuskers on top of Texas. Two sets to none. Asia O'Neill serving, defending, got Texas back into this, but then they, they let it get, get away. Well, that's tough. I mean, that serve, tough one, but followed up with another missed serve. I mean, that's kind of the kiss of death, and this was the finish. And, and Nebraska really executing, playing at a very, very high level, hanging in there towards the end of that. When Texas rallied back, like you can see them on the court right now, they're smiling, they're in a good place. I think they feel like they have momentum here right now. And can they turn it around and get three sets here, Paul? I don't know, man. It's tough to do it twice. Louisville is in. They will take on Wisconsin. Congratulations as well to Dan Fisher and the Pitt Panthers. And Lekator member money get, <laughs> getting the Panthers into the championship. I hope she doesn't mind. Her last name is Monet, but ah, she, having a little. She was she money likes today. It. She likes it. <laughs> well, and two sets to none. I mean, I guess with tongue in cheek, you could say Texas has got Nebraska right where they want them. 25-19, right. <laughs> 25-23, Nebraska 24 and seven on the year. The number 10 seed. Good pass, really good pass. And a dig right on target by Baton Horse, missed out of bounds. Texas, they're saying no touch, but every player on the floor, every single one, every person in the building wearing red says that there was a touch. And a lot of frustration from the staff having to use another challenge. Well, it's, it's one nothing. Right. Do you really use one here, even if you know, even if you're sure that it was a missed call? You know, that's Can it. you burn a challenge this early? That's a really good point, Paul. I mean, that, yeah, it is early. It is early to use a challenge in this set. Let's see if we can take a look at that finger. Remember, this is the old system. Yeah, I think I see it. I think I do. Old system, meaning that you utilize a challenge you, it's gone, it's whether gone. you're right or not. That that'll be changed next year. Yeah, but you've got to sure. go through the got to go through the the process. the process. Was there a touch by Torres, number nine on the right side? 
We're going to take a good long look at this. I, I just look I just don't know if I would have burned one this early in a set well and that, that's I, I mean I, I don't disagree with you at all I mean it's it's early on it's it's one nothing you have so much match left are you seeing that pinky I'm not I, I'm, I'm just not sure and the officials do have that's Brett Myers, the second referee. He does have uh, as many looks as we can possibly provide. Right. You know, the only thing this does, see, right or wrong, slows down some of that momentum, potentially, from that last set that Texas had coming into this set. Yeah, Texas was playing its best volleyball until they served those two balls out of bounds and took the pressure off Nebraska. Nebraska hitting 265 so far in the match. Texas now up to 221. Touch. But my argument is this. Okay, okay. Not having the challenge at your disposal to me is more important than, than being up one nothing. I agree with you, Paul. I'm with you. You're, you're making it and I am with you. <laughs> The under the system will have next year. Once your challenge is upheld, then you keep it. Right. You just roll. Fields looking into the cross court. That was not a really hard rip. Now I think she thought about it. I don't want to hit it right at Rodriguez. Wanted to hit it a little sharper. Took something off of it and then and then made that error. We looked at the reception numbers and it really bears out the strategy. Lexi Rodriguez has only been served three times. So Texas is going at cubic for the most part. Good deep cross court corner. Rodriguez getting a hand on it. Oh. Nobody out. <laughs> That'll work. Yeah. That will work. Holding the block. Everybody jumps with the middle fields with nobody up. Skyler Fields, who was spectacular in last year's regional round, 18 kills on 27 swings. Now with nine kills on 20. But Texas can't get their middles going consistently. Oh. They can't at the blocking end. Caffey is roofed by Butler. What a commit block there by Butler. You watch her just track the middle coming in right in front of her and she takes care of it. There's that look. Jumps at the same time, nowhere to go. Cubic good in reception all night long. And that ball dug, but out of bounds. But back to the middle blockers, Brian Butler, two of seven. And Asia O'Neill, just one of four. That is way below their season average. But it's not about setting choices. It's about it's poor it's passing. about passing. And I like the setting change because I think they have a really good feel for where Gabriel is going with the ball. And it might just be a little bit different here and how the other setter sets the ball, how Sage sets the ball. Well, the sample size is not nearly as big, so right. Nebraska won't have as much film. Film, 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 film. <laughs> film. This, Come on, this Paul. is that film. <laughs> what year is it? Beautiful dig, right at the three-meter line, and a better block. Butler coming alive, reading that play perfectly, knowing that Haynes likes to throw it into Caffey when she's off the net that way. Nice move. Is it hard for a middle blocker to stay engaged when they're not really a big part of the offense? Very hard to stay engaged, but Butler is doing it from the defensive end, and she knows what she needs to do. It has to do whatever it takes. That ball sprayed out of bounds by Parra, who has not gotten it going from the service line so far tonight. There is Jared Elliott, the winningest coach in the history of Texas volleyball, surpassing a Hall of Famer in Mick Haley. And it was Mick Haley for Texas and Terry Pettit in Nebraska, who, who got all this madness started back in the 80s. Both of them Hall of Fame coaches. Step inside, missed out of bounds by Butler. A good route, a Very good, good swing, route. but just over the sideline. Made some movement, got her some, some room. There is Terry Pettit, who got it all started at Nebraska. The court is named for him there at the Devaney Center, and Nick Haley won the first ever championship here in Texas in 1988. First non-West Coast team yes. to win a national championship. Both of them phenomenal. Fantastic coaches. I 
played when Pettit was coaching. Fantastic team and a great coach. He led Nebraska to their first ever title in 1995 against Texas. Texas. Butler again with another block. How many is that? I mean, they have <laughs> four points and she's got three blocks. I don't know, two or three blocks. Big performance by Butler. That's all she can do right now. Hate to see her go on the sideline when she's doing so much for her team right now. Five blocks now for Breon Butler. Seven as a total for Texas, five for Nebraska. Nebraska coming down a little bit, back to their season average almost hitting-wise. 243 now, not a good set, ball too tight. Even Rodriguez couldn't control. That was a perfect set in transition by Torres. Beautiful set. The block has to go all the way to the pin. They, they want to leave that space for Rodriguez and protect the line. Did everything they wanted to do, just too much heat from Eggleston. Tied at five. Melania Osea, the Libro out of Torrance, California, back to serve. Block Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Phillips, this is a big block. Read, they read it well. Right hand, that's a great shot of the right hand of Molly Phillips turning back into the court. Phillips has been very, very quiet offensively, but again, keep your head in the game and make a contribution. Nice block. Texas coming back here early in the third to take the lead. Must win situation for the Longhorns. Some passing trouble now for Nebraska. Rousey, what a perfect delivery by Rodriguez. Uh, that must have gone through some hands because I thought the block was there. Take a good look at this. Another fantastic dig by Haynes. Rousey seeing, oh, just a <laughs> low micro hole. That's the micro hole. <laughs> wow, found that space. Yeah, sometimes lucky counts. That's it. Texas has got Cubic dialed in right now, but that's a smart shot. That's, a, that's an All-American veteran shot into the deep line corner. Beautiful shot. Just a high chop into the corner. Sizz that huge block in front of her. Man, found that corner perfectly. Cubic now with nine kills, 34 attempts to get there. There is a Kana. Boy, I like that. Really nice pass by Parra. That's tough to do. We talked about how the passing got better. You mentioned it earlier against Washington, which is really interesting. When things get tight, the passing getting better. That's what Parra did against Washington as well. Really stepped up. Peterson on to serve. Nebraska receiving with three. Knuckles in the middle of the court. Cubic in area five. Maybe five to five going for Cubic. They do. Out of the back row and off the block. Usually see that in transition. Yeah. Kenzie Knuckles hitting 168 on the year. You know, why not? Let's just uh, throw it up there again, and, and she'll find it. She can hit it hard. She's a good attacker out of the back row. A smart swing off the hand. Texas blockers were ready. They were they there. Were. They, they were there. Nobody fooled on that play. Nebraska leading at 8-7. Two sets to none. So much history on the line between these two teams. Bombed by Asia O'Neill. What a set. That ball passed all the way forward. Look at this beautiful set. Flung all the way back there to O'Neill. Perfectly placed. Between these two teams, Nebraska is looking for their 16th national semifinal. For Texas, their 14th. Wow. It's the 41st year of the tournament. Like, it's like <laughs> they just got them all. you can buy your <laughs> tickets in advance. <laughs> I mean, isn't it, isn't it cheaper to buy them way in advance? It is cheaper. <laughs> Get better seats. <laughs> uh, they're flying charter. Anyway. What yeah, am I that's talking That's a good about? point. That's a good point. Stiverens, instructions given and received. Eggleston. 
I can do that too out of the back row. Offense getting better now on the side for Eggleston in Texas. Definitely clicking a lot better and just moving it around a little bit more. This ball's off the net. You'll see the binding Eggleston again. Same shot is available. She, she hits it again out of the back row. The blocking for Texas has been superb here in the third. Nebraska only hitting 077. That's the bad news. The good news, it's tied at seven apiece. That's blocking. Oh, oh. Landed awkwardly. Fields bounces right back up. Oh, to be young. Sorry. Reaching under, trying to say something to her. Good sportsmanship. Here's that play. Fields reaching over. Uh, That's blocking the set for the second time. It is. Yep, yep. And they're both right there on that center line. That's. Yep. Uh, See Haynes oh, trying to... Yeah, so good that uh, Skyler Fields was able yeah. to walk away. That's yeah. a dangerous play. Bad pass. Oh, what a contact that time by Very Cuban. Nice. Fantastic first contact by Cuban. Handled that, covered well. Here's that play. Right on the money. And this is the scary part about Kathy. Fast transition. You gotta. <laughs> she got hit on the head there yeah. on the celebration. Maddie Kubik wearing number 10. That ball was spinning a lot. That was really tough, and she made it look easy. Good cover by Batenhorst. That was Krause who got that ball set tight. Smart shot by Fields. What a way to find the court, Logan Eggleston. Man, what a swing by number 33. Staying patient, covering, going to fields over and over again, and a smart shot by Eggleston out of the back row. Sage Ka'aina Torres. That rattles through, a net violation is called. They called that on Brian Butler, and she does not protest. Baton Horse just pulling the trigger pretty quick, beating the block before it's able to get set. Baton Horse now 8 of 16, no errors. Lindsey Krause, 9 of 14, one error. 17 of 30 between the two of them. Off of Haynes and out of bounds. Nice play out of the middle as a result of better passing. Well, and Eggleston's been really holding it down. They've been serving her, serving her tough in different areas on the court. Just keeping it up in the air. I mean, that's the key for Texas. It doesn't have to be a perfect pass. They can still run what they want. Krause and Batenhorst are hitting 535 combined. That's crazy. And taking a lot of tough swings. Um, Tremendous performance by the Nebraska freshman. Texas would like nothing better than for Parra to get on a roll. Kubik missed it out of bounds. Looking for the line. You saw her turn, get her feet there, and turn directly down the line. Missed it wide. Just handed a note, 5,080. I told you the capacity was 4,500. You did. That's a new record for attendance at Gregory Gym. Wonderful crowds all over the country, in Louisville, in Pittsburgh, and of course in Wisconsin. Oh, smart shot. Lindsey Krause and Ali Batenhorst are having a night. Coming up with this, I mean, this pass, keeping this alive is one thing, but then finishing it off with a smart shot and a kill is another. And sometimes you're just a little lucky. It wasn't a manhole right. cover. I told you it was a micro hole. Right. Manhole, <laughs> micro. And that one was just lucky through the arms of Breon Butler. But when it's your night, it's your night. That one tipped down, thrown down, if you will. But consistently not called. So just keep it that way. And that was, that was good. That was, that was on top of it. Let go of it quickly. Just threw it in the middle of the court. And no protestation whatsoever no. from the Nebraska no. sideline. Chance for Texas to take the lead. Good to the outside. Pokey kept alive.
Hames has got that up. Spatula dripping. And an unforced error for Nebraska. There's the pancake. This tip looked like it was going to fall, but a nice read by Haynes. And this one, Cubic just couldn't come up with. Yeah, rare ball handling yeah. mistake. Rodriguez has been almost flawless, but set that ball a little too tight. Texas leading at 14-13. Must win. That ball served into the top of the tape. You'll see I had three aces the other night, a couple of them coming as they dribbled off the top of the tape. Where Texas needs to be tough at the service line, be consistent with what they're doing. You want to lay a kana on to serve now and play some defense out of Hawaii. We'll have the media timeout after this point. Rodriguez right on target. And Cubic going off speed. Nice play by Eggleston. Doug again by Rodriguez and missed out of bounds. Oh, a net violation. The net is going to be called on Asia O'Neill, and we will step aside. Nebraska, one set win away from yet another trip to the semifinals. Back with three-time All-American Salima Rockwell on Paul Sunderland. One more ticket. Will it be Nebraska or will it be Texas? And coming out of the media timeout, Akana with her 34th ace on the year. How big is that? Out of a timeout, not just keeping that thing in play, going after it. Another really good serve. If you're Texas, do you call a timeout here, I mean, even though you just had one? That's uh, tough, but yes, maybe. Yeah. yeah, no more maybe. Yeah. No more maybe. No. Had to call it there. Akana was on a roll, and uh, there's no question that Nalani Yosia, who has been really, really rock solid in reception, was a little bit unnerved. Let's take a look at the last two aces. Yeah, Huge question, for Nebraska. It is, and the question is, do you back her up a little bit? I mean, you can't back her out of the passing. Just back up the rece reception and see if Akana can work her short a little bit, but she's going deep into that corner right now. And that's where she's catching, you'll see her. There are the three defenders there, inseparable, yeah. even over on the sideline. <laughs> can we dig more balls? I don't know. Can you? I don't know, maybe. 17. Well, let's give you the numbers. 43 digs for Nebraska, 31 for Texas. Now, Nebraska always outdigs their opponent. Right. I mean, they're the best in the country, right? Right. But would the question be, who would put the ball to the floor? Lindsey Krause, 10 of 16. Ali Batenhorst, 8 of 16. 18 of 32 with one error hitting over 500. I know. We keep saying it. That's the difference. We'll look at the digs here, but we talk about how good their floor defense is, and that's what keeps them in it. That's why Batenhorst is able to score. That's why Krause is able to score. Just keeping the ball alive and off the floor, which Again, Texas just doesn't see every day. You know, those, a lot of those swings that normally go down are not going down. Enjoying the moment. Well, you gotta love that. I mean, yeah. crowds going crazy, standing room only, and they're out here kicking it up, kicking a heel. Why not? Up two sets to none and 17-14. Texas needs to get out of this rotation. What a dig by Rodriguez. That was a good swing. Saving block. The block. This time, Phillips and O'Neill has gotten Texas back in and is keeping them in this match. And O'Neill can step up just like Butler did and take care of the net when that ball is off the net, getting in a good position. <laughs> Man, what a dig by Rodriguez. Nine blocks now for O'Neill in Texas. 17-15. Shank pass. Peterson served those couple aces down the line at Akana earlier. It was excellent against Washington on Thursday. Coming up big there with an ace. Timeout now called by Nebraska. We saw the serve reception numbers after the second set, and there's no question that Maddie Kubik was target number one, followed by 
Keonale Akana, but then keep him completely as much as they possibly can away from Rodriguez. And finally, Kubik has been rock solid she's, all weekend, all tournament it. long, all career long, if you will. <laughs> but it's just the constant, it's constant a lot. pressure. It's yeah. a lot of pressure. And if they can't get it right on her, you're just working those seams or that half of the court as hard as you can to so get it on either knuckles or Kubik or when they're passing in two, just her half of the court. Take a look at the championship news and notes. Again, three teams have advanced Louisville and Pitt for the very first time. Wisconsin for the third year in a row into the national semifinals and the Pac-12 shut out of the regional finals for the first time since 1998. And again, going to have another Big Ten team in the national semifinals for every year since 2007. The Big Ten has really shown up again this year with Wisconsin advancing, Nebraska here in a good position against Texas. And Purdue also making Purdue. it to the regional final round. Congratulations to Dave Shondell and the Boilermakers on a wonderful season and our condolences to the Shondell family. The loss of Don, one of the great men of volleyball uh, in the country in years gone by. One of the founders. Coming out of the timeout. 17-16, this third set has been very, very close, as was the second. Once Asia O'Neill and Texas made a big move, Nebraska led it 21-18. We're tied at 23 before a couple of uh, service errors and then an overpass. A big shift there, got Cuba completely out. Knuckles just took over for her on the toss. Right on the sideline, what a pass by Knuckles. Kenzie Knuckles. Tough. If you're named Knuckles, you got to be tough. You got to be tough. And watch this shift. As soon as they serve, they pulled Kubik out and moved Knuckles over there into that deep corner. Well executed plan. Kubik now in double figures, but hitting 10 kills, 11 errors. Texas has certainly slowed her, but she's out there for her all around game, as is Logan Eggleston. Doug again off one of the banners, still legally in play. You hit cross court, you better expect it's coming back. Nice dig by Akana. Perfect. Good touch by Fields. Free ball, Nebraska on the slide. Off of Peterson. Stiffens with the kill. Wow, the defense by Nebraska. Here's that first dig by Rodriguez, keeping it alive. They keep. Keep it on their side of the court. Stiverns, one of the best middles in the country. 19-16, setter change once again. Two-time Big 12 setter of the year, Jenna Gabriel back on the floor. Tight pass, that's gotta be blocking the set, yeah. This official's done a very nice, consistent job on that. Clearly, it's against the rules to block the set when the ball is completely on your side. Absolutely the right call. Or in Stiverns, getting excited that ball's coming over, but you see the ball is completely on the Texas side of the net. That's a good job by Jenna Gabriel at five foot eight going up and staying on that ball. For sure. Kubik is blocked out of the backcourt. It's the blocking right now for Texas. It is the blocking. They know where the ball's going. When you, they serve down the line and it's a little bit off the net, they're going to set Kubik in that, in that play. And everybody gets in. They know exactly what they need to do right now. Batenhorst hadn't had a shot in a while. Oh, the pokey. Peterson was there, but Asia O'Neill couldn't see her. A break on the outside. Batenhorst able to put that ball away. That's a tough one. When it dribbles right down your back, you're coming down, want to make a move for it. Just couldn't come up with it. I remember that play because Peterson was right there as she should have been. Nebraska five points away from their 16th semifinal. Fields off the inside hand. Fields going right back at it. Haynes not completely over the net on that last, that last swing. 
17 kills for Eggleston. Now Skyler Fields in double figures. Texas hit 228. Nebraska 247. See if they go over Gabriel. They've had success over there on the left side with this matchup with Baton Horse and Gabriel. Served just out of bounds. Remember, it was serving errors at the end of the second set that really hurt Texas. Nebraska four points away. Saved by Peterson. Bait and horse, Caffey out to bait and horse going off speed. Fields off the block and out of bounds. Rule number one, never stop. Keep going and Peterson does. Look at the hustle, the turn and go into the bench, plays it, lays out for it, saves her team. And this is all Peterson's point. Can Texas capitalize? They trail by one. Fields through the block and down. Missed chance on the left by Nebraska. Both teams with a timeout remaining. Working on Cubic relentlessly. Oh, another miss serve. So that's two out of the last three. That's tough. In, the, in this stretch, after 20 in the red zone, how are you in those moments? A lot of pressure for Texas right now. Not a ton for Nebraska. You saw all those service errors, and let's remember the first two rounds were just three sets. Right. It was only five sets against Washington. Here is Knuckles, 22-21. Fields into the cross court. Fields turning it on, lighting it up right now. Transitioning out to her is the answer. Does Para have an answer at the service line now for Texas? Been the most dangerous for the Longhorns all season long. The answer is yes, and it started with par at the service line. Better under pressure, that tough serve, cupping it towards the right side of the court. Timeout, Nebraska, and for Molly Phillips, she has really had a tough night offensively. Her first kill. Since 2016, if you advance through the first and second round and you were one of the top seeds, you got to host, and so this is what you get. And the record during that time for the home teams is 70 and four. 12 of the 16 teams reaching the semis. Those are the four that fell, and Texas was one of them yep. a couple of years ago, pre-COVID in 2019, to none other than Louisville. This is why, this is why it's so important to get that top four seed. It's crucial to play at home. Your crowd can get you back at times that you just don't think. Well, if, you Texas, can get it is done. Any, if Texas is anywhere but at home on Thursday night, they don't oh, come back and win that. No, no. Right now, again, pressure is on, down two sets. And Para has been frozen for a bit. And now the cheerleaders are in her way. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
ball is going to come towards Knuckles for sure. In the timeout, do you tell Parr to just go for it, or do you tell her to keep it? What do you tell her? I bet you don't tell her anything. Okay. I bet you just let her go back out there. Oh, just out of bounds. Wow. Maybe a challenge. Coach Elliott is asking his players down that line. Yeah. And there's going to be, oh, this is, this is as big as the challenge the it other is, night in the third set. This is as big. They're wow. Not, they're not very convinced. The bench didn't seem very convinced. They're right there on the sideline. Breon Butler just clips the top of the tape. It's definitely hard to see from our vantage point on the initial play. Oh, oh, wow. Wow. There's, um, it's not going to be the angle. Kathy is kind of in the way of the other angle. Well, the ball was called out. Look at that. Look at that freeze frame. Look at that. <laughs> that looks like it's on the line. It does to me. look like it's on That's, the line. That, that shot shows me that that ball is on the line and in. Oh, yeah. You think so as well? Well, Selena? especially when they bounced it back, when you rewind it a little bit there. I wasn't sure if it was grazing past it, but. I, I know that there are lots of athletes kind of in the way. It's not their job to give right. us a clear view of the line. <laughs> but the best angle we had, I think, was the other one where yeah. they shuttled back and forth. Right. I think that ball's in. Look at how huge is this moment. Here we go. I do not know how to say cool as a cucumber in Spanish. <laughs> but that's Melanie Parra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sir. Well, at least Texas's season was on the line. Absolutely. And it, it still is. This one's not this out, one's far from over. Out of a timeout, now out of a challenge. Is she gonna do it? Well, Para misses that one, but they wouldn't be they wouldn't be here now without the, the winner and the ace. Absolutely would not. Set point number two, must win for Texas. You have Eggleston on the left, Brian Butler in the middle, Phillips on the right. A big block in front of them. Where's she gonna go? A chance for the tie. Texas comes storming back once again. Didn't I say it at the beginning? <laughs> Texas, Nebraska. <laughs> Biggest difference for Texas in that third set. What got him over the line? Well, you know, I really like the change in the setting position. It, it just provided a different look. It provided a little different en energy. Not that Gabriel was doing bad, but sometimes you just have to change things up, and that worked steady down. The passing that got things going offensively, but it was the blocking. The blocking of Butler and O'Neill stepped up. So everything, I guess. A lot of things changed, and Texas just turned it around. Now it's Nebraska's turn to bounce back. But another must-win set situation for the Longhorns. Dug by Eggleston. Lots of traffic shot up into the block. Hames is luckily right on the spot. That's, that, you, that's, a, that's a bad set. Man, that is set. Right in the phone booth with nowhere to go. They still have phone booths somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. No, I saw sure. one in Croatia you, a few years yeah. ago. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're still there. They're still in Europe. Well, look at some of the numbers from that set. 
Texas holds Nebraska to 118. Texas hits 300, sides out at 62. That was close, 62 to only 58. But it was the seven blocks. And Phillips finally got her first kill. What a dig by Rodriguez. Point blank, another block. Butler just has the answer right now at the net. Nothing is getting past her. Phillips is usually very, very dependable. Averages about two kills per set, hits 395. They need to change things up, find a way to get her going somewhat. A little bit of a different set. A couple of sets weren't perfect, and she just couldn't get a good beat on the ball. Cubic looking to go high, flat, and got the touch. She got Perfect Phillips. execution, yep. Yeah. And Phillips is shaking her head, yep. Got her down the line. That's the high, flat swing. Because she's not getting around that big block right now. Cubic on the other side, speaking of struggling, 11 kills on 44 swings, 13 hitting errors. Hitting negative. More errors than kills. She is not coming out, however. <laughs> she does so much for this team. They're trying to get Phillips going. There it is Cubic, again. Yeah, back to back, really good swings. That's what they did early on in the match. High off the hands, even when it was Phillips up there, working off the edges. That's going to be a better swing for them. The seventh meeting all time in the NCAA tournament between Nebraska and Texas. Played for the 95 championship, the 2015 championship, the semifinals in 16. Oh, they called a net violation. Stiffren says, yep, be right away. No complaint. That's a break. Such history between these two programs. 31st regional final for Nebraska, 26th for Texas. Easy serve, gobbled right up. And then down the line, Lindsey Krause is having the best match of her freshman year. The series history, yeah, they have played a lot. This is the 57th meeting. Texas a 4-2 advantage in NCAA matches. Remember, until 2011, Nebraska was in the Big 12. They used to play all the all time. All the time. Really, in recent years, it's been in the, these matches, the most important matches of the year. Look at this matchup once again. That's the third ace for Akana working on Yosia, the libero for Texas. Catching her in that corner. See if they squeeze her a little bit more or, or do something, a little bit of an adjustment. But it's hard because you don't want her out of the passing pattern. You can't pass with two against Akana. That's a break for Texas, and also just to finish that thought, you're exactly right, Salima. Not, not overwhelming confidence in Para's ability to take right. a lot of court right. and reception. So that and that makes it a challenge. Yeah, you'll see. He's just got to step in and make a play, as Para did at the end of the third set, with a service winner and a service ace. Perfect pass, and Hames. Doesn't do it very often, but that was really a good choice after first reception. Smart time. Haynes very good at this. Here's the ball pass. Watch O'Neal just kind of waiting to see where she's going to set the ball. Completely loses sight. That's her player right there in that position when Stiffens runs the slide. Eggleston solid again and having some success down the line. That's a high level swing. Again, over the top of Haynes and around deep down the line. Got a great defender back there, but it was too, too far for her to defend. Are the Texas attackers from the left side, are they aware or, or do they have it in their head how good Rodriguez is in digging the cross court? Absolutely. You want to avoid that at all costs. Rare passing opportunity for Rodriguez. What a good high swing. Allie Batenhorst continues to have a night. Look at her. I, I mean, this ball off the net. That is a big swing for a young player with that block in front of her.
Nebraska leading 7-4 in the fourth. Won the opening set 25-19, the second 25-23. Before Texas got on the board. Off the edge of the block. Left sides for Texas starting to hit line. Well, they've got to expose it. They've had some success earlier, a couple of swings off the edge. They can hit that right hand. I mean, and they're, they swing hard enough that it's hard to really slow them down when you're doing that. Caffey missed it into the cross court. Good execution on the slide, but just too wide, and it's one point now lead still for Nebraska. Texas following that perfect pass, and, and there's four hands, those big hands in front of you. You're going to make some adjustments and maybe make some hitting errors. Good block deflection. Chance for Texas to tie. What a perfect set that time by Eggleston. And she just went with it hard into that angle. And because she's so high, she doesn't run out of room when she goes that far inside the court. She has that angle. Fields now with 15 kills. Eggleston leading the way with 19. Overpass. Oh, joust won by Hames. She's one of the best at that. She really is. Times it perfectly, follows it. She's strong. She's got strong shoulders. I don't know. But plays it second. That's the key. Wait for it. Yeah, yeah. And joust. Touch it last. Mm -hmm. Off the block. Not there. Good work by Caffey and Krause as well on the outside. Saw Krause really turning her hand in to avoid this line shot, but that's where Caffey shows up and takes care of the cross court. Kayla Caffey with her fifth block so far on the night as a team. Texas with 12, Nebraska with seven. They're working, really working on Yosia. Ames flying. Texas over the top, and throwing that ball down. Well, that's very effective for Texas when they show Skyler Fields and Logan Eggleston go up and just kind of throw that one, one to the middle of the court. It just feels like this set, just like the previous two, both 25-23, going to go right down to the wire yep. and going to come down to one play. The previous set, it was par as ace was the one play. Absolutely. Cubic in a good rhythm now passing. And speaking of that, all night long, Lindsey Krause, 12 kills on 20 swings, hitting almost 500. These two freshmen, Baton Horst and Krause between them, 40 swings, make it 41 swings, two errors, two errors. That's incredible, something they need to do. It's the way they, they can win. Service error that time by Knuckles. Yeah, and this is both Krause and Batenhorst are going to be stars oh. in college volleyball. But this is way above the level they've shown way all above. season long. And John Cook has said as much. I need them to step up at some point, really settle in there. Krause has and Batenhorst having a huge match tonight. Here is Parra again. I'll give you their season numbers. That ball, I'll give them to you now. Let's take Krause. She's hitting 500 on the year. She's hitting 219. Batenhorst on the year, 152, is hitting 476. She's playing out of their minds in a big moment in a facility like this, in an environment like this. Incredibly impressive. And give a lot of credit to Nicklin Hames, the senior setter who has had some struggles so far this year. But if those numbers are there, she's got to be setting a very good match. Absolutely. And there's Butler getting the ball. They need to get her the ball. She's doing it from the blocking end. And if she can get going offensively, they can go on more runs with her. Can anybody put together a little bit of a mini run? You'll see it back to serve. Nebraska leading 11-10. Cubic away from Yosia. 
Salima, does Texas have to up their service pressure? It looks like they're being a little conservative right now. Yeah, maybe they are, and I think they're trying to go right at people. Serve, I'm serving you, and it's going right into their laps. If they can just serve hard in the seams, I think they'll have a little bit more success. It's Nebraska who keeps maintaining. They're siding out at a pretty good rate here in the fourth, so they're maintaining this little bit of separation. Another shank pass. Nebraska, can they get to their, oh, head out of bounds. The Nebraska sideline says touch, but remember the challenge at yeah, one nothing? I remember. Remember? I remember, and you were very adamant that that was a bad idea. Well, under this system, you just can't burn a challenge. I, I agree. Big break for Texas. Everything was lined up for Stiffrens and Hames. See if they go down the line over Gabriel here. They serve. Peterson once again stepping up, coming through with an ace here. Is it just me or has Texas had five or six aces this weekend off the top of the tape? You see, it had a couple for sure. Helps to play at home. Oh, that's a wonderful shot by Kubik. Sure Just is. a wonderful angle. Especially when it goes all the way out to the pin, you might expect her to hit that ball down the line over Gabriel and cuts it, drops that thumb and cups it inside. Kubik now leading the way, 13 kills. Krause with 12, Batenhorst with 10, Caffey with six. Stiverens only has four. Remember, sprained her ankle the week prior to coming into this round of the tournament. And still not 100% after back surgery. Tough serve. Eggleston. What a good block by Stiverens, number 26 in red with Hames. See that move, that block move. Hands over the net, pikes at the net. Man, that is a nice. Move. See Stiverens and Hames, they were looking up at the big screen. <laughs> they wanted to see that block again. Of course they do. <laughs> Back in Austin once again, jam packed Gregory Gymnasium. Look at this, last championship in 2012, 13 national semifinals, three titles overall, 15 for Nebraska and five. And there are times, even with, you put the rivalry aside, yep. there are times that Nebraska and Texas join forces they do. to win an Olympic gold medal. Jordan Larson, Justine Wong-Arantes, K-Rob, Kelsey Robinson, and Chaka Abagu. Chaka Abagu, the all-time leading blocker for the University of Texas. Out of the back row, Kubik gets that ball down inside oh, O'Neal, and now the little bit of a mini run. A micro run. Mi uh, mini, <laughs> mini, mini. I'm just messing with you. Micro is two, <laughs> mini is between three and five. <laughs> Nebraska leading by three, largest lead of the set. They lead two sets to one. Overpass, great play by Gabriel, keeping that ball alive. Batenhorst again. If Texas wins this point, what a play by Gate. Oh, they called it. They called that. Oh, no. Oh, no. You, oh, no, no. Oh, that's the, that's You've tough. let it go all night. This is what, this was my worst fear. Right. right. So, this is the play. How long does it sit in her hand? But that, at this point, doesn't even matter, right? How was that any different it, it, than the eight or 10 that preceded it? It was not. It was not a high tip to the middle of the court, and I don't even think. Wow, wow. I said it, I said it two hours ago. My biggest fear was that there was one gonna be called out of the blue. Yeah. Texas is in real trouble right now after Gabriel had made a magnificent blocking save. Jared is Time not going to be happy. Time out. Look, I'm not going to belabor the point, right? I'm going to just say this. If you call that one in the first set, right. and you call it, then it stops. It stops. But you don't call one in the fourth after letting 10 or 15, not, not 15, but several go, in my opinion. That's a tough one, and, and Gabriel works so hard at the net. Several touches, a couple of blocks. 
Here it is again, the same play, the same to play. To me, it's just no different. Night. What do you think, Salima? I, I, I think it's the same play they've been doing all night. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what it is. Call it what you want, but at this point, you have to be consistent. And I, I didn't even think that was a throw. I didn't even think that was one. I saw no differentiation from that play to any number that had preceded it. And what a big point. And oh, a huge, point. huge. Because after the, the save that Gabriel had potentially made on the overpass. And that was changing everything. That was shifting that momentum again. Now Texas is going to have to dig themselves out of yet another hole. Remember back to Thursday night, two sets to none, 15-10. Went on a 10-4 run in that set to get it back. Texas is gonna have to do the same. Nebraska, the number 10 seed. Texas, the number two. Nebraska won the first two sets. The second, 25-23. Texas, behind seven blocks, won the third, 25-23. This was back and forth, 8-8, 9-9, 10-11, 12-10. Yeah. But now, the five-point advantage for the visiting Cornhuskers. Tight pass again, another, another chance for Batenhorst and really good serving for Nebraska. Allie Batenhorst having the match of her life at the right time. Batenhorst 12 of 25, but most remarkably, no errors as good as Texas has been blocking. Batenhorst has not been blocked, nope. has not hit a ball out of bounds. Hitting 152 on the year, hitting 500 in the regional finals. Batenhorst again. On fire. That was a huge rip on the outside by Ali Batenhorst. Just going for it right now. 19 to 12, Texas on very, very thin ice once again. Riley Heinrich on to pass. They go after her. 20 to 12. Going hard down the line right now. I'm going to squeeze Heinrich a little bit here. Parr is coming in now for Fields. She might step into the passing. Yep, she will. Nebraska five points away from a huge upset over your arch rival. Yeah. Service error here. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not it's not an upset when it's Nebraska. It's you know this is. A storied program. They finished second in the toughest conference in the country in the Big Ten. So it's no surprise they're going to play them tight. But certainly this would be an upset. Especially in this building. Oh. Nebraska and John Cook, the number 10 seed. Texas at number two. Very little time for Eggleston and Texas. But there is time. Batenhorst off the edge again. What a night for this freshman and another as we bring in tonight's top performer. Brought to you by Buick. Lindsey Krause, 12 kills, solid in blocking, hitting 500, and then she and Batenhorst. How good is Nebraska when these two freshmen, I guess they're not freshmen anymore. Not anymore. 32nd match of the year for Nebraska. Wonderful swing over the top by Fields. Really good set by Heinrich. And if anyone can get him going at Fields, she can streak points for them. Transition, I would just throw it up to her. There's only two, two hitters, but man, just go with it. 
Maddie Kubik has been rocks. Her offensive numbers are not going to blow no. anybody away. No. But she has just been rock solid in reception, and that's what Nebraska has really needed, making things possible for these freshmen. But still another block. There's Breon Butler with Gabriel. Butler's been big. She may have even reached over Gabriel. I'm not sure, but she got so close to her so she can surround the ball and get that block. Texas got to have it every opportunity. Nice dig. Akana right there. Out of the back row. Eggleston with a kill. They've got time. We've seen it before. Eggleston coming in hot out of the back row, hitting that ball to the right back, where she's been so effective tonight. Timeout called by Nebraska. The lead is still five. Three teams have advanced to the national semifinals, two of them for the very first time, and both out of the ACC. And what a record setting year that conference had. They had three teams in the regional final. Louisville moving on. They will take on Wisconsin at 7 Eastern time on ESPN on Thursday. And the Pitt Panthers follow either half an hour later or approximately 9.30 also on ESPN against either Nebraska or Texas. It's been some amazing matches so far and, and just watching all of these teams, all these new teams in the, in the hunt and in the mix. You talk about the parity, but they, they've just gotten better. The, the level of volleyball across the country has just increased so much over the last couple of years. Absolutely, across the board. And look, look, a lot of the challenge was Logan Eggleston. One of the areas that can be challenged is foot on the three meter line. And when she hit this ball, I was actually thinking that it was so close. Oh. But remember, it has to be conclusive. Right. And there's not a camera dedicated to that line. So. Here's the question. Does she hit the line? There it is. The call was a good play by Texas. And when you look at the court and the line, you can see just even a little bit of that dark area of the court right before the three meter line. Yeah, I, I just don't think there was yeah. enough evidence to yeah. overturn that. Yeah, I, I agree with that decision. Probably a good challenge because if it's a two point switch, that makes it 22 15. Right, and right. this might basically be over. And Nebraska is now out of challenges. The call stands Asia O'Neill, who has played some magnificent defense back at the line. Now she's got to serve tough if you're a Texas fan. Texas fan. Good play by Cubic. Chance for Texas to Fields and missed it out of bounds. A huge break for Nebraska. That's a big one. That's where you want to go with it. I mean, Fields has done so much and scored every time in transition. That's that's a high flat swing, just one miss. Nebraska three points away from their 16th national semifinals. I think that Texas is going to challenge that there may have been a touch off the Nebraska block. I, I don't know if they actually, I, I don't know. I don't think they actually think it was a touch. That's just my opinion. Well, te slow Texas is down. Texas is out of timeouts. Right? This is perfectly allowable right. within the rules. So slow thing. You never know. There, there might have been a micro net. You just, ne you never know because again, the officials are instructed to bundle all those three looks. Right. Touch off the block, right. a net fault, and ball is in or out. We'll see, so maybe I'm, Mistaken, but we will see if we see anything. 
Yeah, oh. net there's a net violation. Oh, there's a net that. violation. Wow. Yeah, look yeah, yeah. At that. Yeah, that's going to be a break for Texas. Good use of the challenge, so a two-point switch. I stand corrected. I certainly didn't think there was a touch because it was way over top of the wall. But Haynes did clip the net. They know it. I'm sure she told them in the in the huddle, so they're prepared for yep, it. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, volleyball players are notorious liars. You can't. <laughs> What is this? You can't, you can't lie anymore. No. I mean, somebody's finger is like impl right. Im implanted in the ball. Right. They're going, no touch. No, no. <laughs> I think we got a good look at it. Yeah, that ball's out of, but there's yeah, a net touch. Yeah, and so, out yeah, and out. They look, the, the officials are instructed to look at all of it. And, and Hames has told, the coaching, she, I netted. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She might react like she didn't. We'll see. That's my favorite part. Yeah, there, there it is. Okay. There it is. That's really good work by the Texas coaching yep. staff. Both of these teams have magnificent head coaches and staffs, as you well know. Absolutely. Having served here and at your alma mater, Penn State, it is a team effort. High quality assistants, associate head coaches on both staffs that know the game and dissect it every single play. Two huge challenges. One might have saved Texas on Thursday. Can this one do the same? Wow. 21-17. <laughs> Write it down. 21-17. Cubic has been really good in first contact. Until now. Wow. A huge point there. Driving it right, the, right on her. And that's the area you want to go. Again, not just serving it easy in her lap. Driving that ball. Kana responds, perfect pass. Fields gonna get a look. What did they call? I have no idea. The play was very innocuous. I have no idea what the call was. It's 21-19, and I haven't seen a single signal. There's a jump set. There's the swing. I still have seen nothing. I, they I called. Either. I think they called a net violate. I, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. it as well. Wow, 21-19. What a play out to Batenhorst. Are you kidding me? She is showing wow. so much experience, guts. I mean, digging in here. This yeah, play look at, was dead. Look at Rodriguez. Yeah. I mean, wow. to put that ball in that position. That was an amazing play. Up into the block, recycle, maybe coming right side, no. Paintbrush by Caffey. Fields is roofed. Kayla Caffey dropping into that angle. Watch this move, doesn't let her Hit this ball sharp. A big, big drop. Aims to serve. Nebraska two points away. That's a clutch comeback. Skyler Fields had a really good response. Always does. Skyler Fields getting her feet there, hitting it just such a high level and a high contact point. Krause on the left, Kathy in the middle. Batenhorst now on the right. Kathy, one point away. Match point, semi-final point.
place is deafening. Fields. Not yet, says Fields in Texas. Keeping it alive, but Para has to go to the service line. This is her chance. Para pulled Texas over the finish line in the third set. Can she do it again? Perfect pass by Rodriguez. Nebraska with the upset on the road. What a performance by Nebraska. Came in with a game plan, executed it perfectly.